I grew up in a society where there was a huge emphasis on academic success. Our value as a person, our identity was formed based on your achievement. I considered myself a good Christian because I did well academically. I scored the top marks in school, I scored the top marks in Sunday school, and I expected God to reward me. So I think I hadn't fully connected my sinfulness. I hadn't understood the magnitude of what the gospel really meant. But I was more concerned with having the dream life and the dream job. It was about eight years ago that my life took a drastic turn. I had just finished my master's and I had a PhD offer in Europe. I thought I had my life and my career figured out, but within a span of about eight months, my world had turned upside down. After I had finished my master's course, my wedding was arranged. In the lead up to our wedding, my father-in-law was diagnosed with cancer and he passed away two weeks before our wedding. And a month after that, I moved here to Australia with my husband, Emmanuel, to start a new life here. And the months that followed were really hard. People paint the picture of, oh, floating on the clouds, honeymoon phase. Yeah, didn't have any of that because it was just shrouded in grief. From losing a family member, from losing my career direction, I thought God made me a failure. And I was just so angry at God. I was spiraling in my own dark thoughts. I just felt that life was meaningless. It was about a year after that at a church where we were a part of at that time when the gospel made sense to me. I still remember the pastor's words he said in his sermon. When something bad happens, do you question God and ask him, what you did to deserve that. How dare you? What you deserved was to die on that cross and he took that punishment instead of you. Those words just cut right through my heart. They were so confronting and also so comforting. I realized I wasn't that good person that I thought I was. I was a sinner and I needed to be rescued from the wrath of God. The Almighty God, who is holy and magnificent, matchless in His glory. The God who made the world, the stars, the universe, everything, loved me so much that He was willing to die a brutal death for my sake. And He rose again, so I get to spend eternity with Him. To have my eyes open to that fact was mind-blowing. There is absolutely nothing like the freedom that comes from being bonded to Christ. For the first time, it felt weird to me that I was chasing after worldly things which were so minute in comparison to the God who is bigger than the universe, who's actually offered me himself through Jesus. It was all due to his grace and not by my own goodness. Through Jesus, he bore that punishment. He bore that rod on himself and gave me a clean slate. Also, it was so freeing. I didn't have to worry about disappointing somebody. I didn't have to worry about disappointing myself because the whole of eternity, if I get to spend that with God himself, there's nothing else in this world that can actually compare to that. I knew that my future was secure and my identity was in Jesus. I don't have to worry about pleasing people anymore because God is pleased with me. It's also just motivated me to use what I have for the sake of others, like to give more freely, to help those who are in need, because I have everything I need in Jesus. If I am not perfect at something or if I fail at something, it's not the end of the world because I'm already successful in terms of where my eternity lies. I don't have to be the perfect parent and also I don't have to expect my kids to be like the perfect kids. I hope my kids would agree to me one day <laughs> that they didn't feel the pressure to perform a certain way, to earn favor of those around them because when you trust in Jesus, God is pleased with you. Whether it will be school grades or sports, your job or your relationship or whatever, you don't really have to please anybody else. You don't even have to please yourself if God is pleased with you.